Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So this year we've seen quite a number of new handhelds released on the market for the ham radio community. And one of the last ones for the year for me is this. This is the Retivis HA2. Now I believe this is the successor to the HA1 that we saw a few months ago, but let's treat this like a new radio. The first thing that is nice to see is the packaging. And while the packaging doesn't make the radio any better, it does do something psychologically. Now, the form factor of the HA2 is similar to recent Retivis handhelds that we've seen in the past. It's solid, it's weighty, and it does have a nice quality feel to it. Numeric keypad down the bottom, screen in the middle, and then the audio output speaker and internal microphone at the top are all in the normal locations. Now the buttons are actually a little stiff, but do have a nice confirmation click to them when you press them. Now down the left side, we have one PTT button and two user programmable function buttons. Down the right side, we have a speaker mic connection, which also doubles up as a programming port. And yep, you need one of those special connectors rather than the standard Kenwood style that we see on most handheld radios. On the top, there's a volume control, and next to this is a continuous rotary encoder. Now this is used for changing memories or frequency. There is a single orange button, which by default activates an emergency feature. And then there's the antenna connection, which is in a standard SMA female, which I think is quite nice to see. As you would have saw a moment ago, you do get a desktop charger, but you can also charge the battery using the supplied USB-C cable and it's on the rear, not on the bottom of the battery. Now you do get a mains wall adapter if selected when ordering, and you should get one that's suitable for your country. The battery itself is rechargeable and it's 2800 milliamp hour and it weighs 129 grams on its own. Okay, so let's attach the battery, the antenna, and then power it on in a moment. But before going through the menu, let's quickly talk about the specifications of the HA2. Well, essentially, it's a dual band, two meter and 70 centimeter analog handheld transceiver. Now the website states four power levels with 10 watts being maximum, but within the menu, there's actually only three settings and later we'll check that high power setting. Now it has airband receive using AM. And again, we'll check that later as some radios don't actually do it very well. Live APRS is also included, meaning you can beacon your location to the APRS network over RF via APRS gateways. This can be set to manual, timed automatic, or smart beaconing. The HA2 has GPS, but not only does it have GPS, it also supports GNSS. Now, GPS is Global Positioning Systems, which is basically the US military satellites for navigation whereas GNSS is Global Navigation Satellite System. So with GNSS, you should in theory get a faster lock because it can use more navigation satellites like GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, etc. GNSS support also means you should see improved time sync and higher accuracy. Now that should be less than one meter. Other features include FM radio and quick access to the NOAA channels, which are the weather channels used in the US. Of course, not everybody's going to need those, but it's nice to see that it's there. The HA2 also supports Bluetooth, not only for programming via a mobile application, but also for Bluetooth PTT, Bluetooth headsets and Bluetooth speaker microphones. The HA2 is also IP67 rated, which means it's waterproof up to one minute, and apparently it's dustproof too. Now taking a closer look at the buttons, screen and menu, the scan button will switch between VFO1 and VFO2 when you hold it in. You can then use the rotary control to cycle through those memories. Or if the VFO is set to VFO and not memory mode, then it will change the frequency up or down. Pressing and holding button four, which is also labeled as step, will allow you to change the frequency step size. You'll also see that most of the numeric buttons have a function label on them. All you do is hold that button down to access that function. A direct dial is also possible just using the numeric keypad. It does have this kind of weird little pop-up dialog which enters the frequency instead of doing it directly on the VFO itself. 
Now, if we go into the menu, we can see all the features and functions that are in a list format. There are quite a few of them, and you can program this radio using this menu completely. There are some settings, however, which can only be performed in software. And one of those settings actually is APRS Smart Beaconing setting. You can create three types. As well as GNSS, the HA2 has an inbuilt compass, which actually does appear to work quite well. There's a little calibration routine you have to perform the first time, but after that, it seems to point north quite accurately. One of the other nice features that the HA2 has is called zones. Now, zones are part of the memory channel feature, but it allows you to group together memories and then just select that zone. For example, you might want to create a zone for repeaters in your local area, and then another zone for business or commercial frequencies, or even a zone for the PMR channels. Now, I think this is a feature taken from DMR radios, but it definitely has a benefit on analog radios too. Now, it can also help when you use the scanning feature. You can set up scanning groups too within the software, or within the radio, you can choose which scanning group you'd like to scan. Now, this is how fast the scanning works going through memories. Okay, so let's take a listen to see what the HA2 sounds like while it's receiving. Now, first, I'll tune into my local All Star node. Yeah, something like that, uh, 98, something like that is when that happened. Yeah, they've been gone for a while. Way back being a kid, you know, uh, that team. Earl Campbell was the big running back. Uh, man, that guy could. That guy was like a tank. And uh, Warren Moon was a quarterback. Uh, Dan Pastorini was a quarterback. Uh. Next, let's take a listen to AM on the airband. And for this, I will use my outside antenna. Sierra, American 7290. Turn right, back to Ockham. Leave Ockham heading 270 degrees and maintain current speed. Virgin 198, of a niner, Sierra American 729. Falling Quebec, power to sending out to 6 hours, PQH 1008. Information Quebec 319, radar right head 345. Right, 045, speed 180, um, established localizer, okay, Falling Quebec, Papa. Speed 180, whiskey, 3 power whiskey. And now, well, let's hear what the transmitted audio sounds like. And for this, I'm going to use an SDR receiver close by to my radio and record what it's receiving. DQW testing the transmitted audio on the Ilons or Retivis HA2. This is in narrow mode. This is in narrow, narrow, narrow. This is M0 DQW testing the transmitted audio on the Ilons HA2. Uh, this is narrow with the compander turned on. The compander is turned on over. This is M0 DQW testing the wide transmission, wide setting on the Islands HA2 uh, with the compander turned on on wide. Compander is now turned on. This is M0 DQW testing the Islands HA2 and this is with the compander turned off, compander turned off and audio set to wide. One of the first hardware tests we'll perform will look at the RF output power. So with the radio set to 145 MHz and the power set to high, we can see an output of 5 watts. And this is with a fully charged battery. Now if we perform the same test on UHF at 435 MHz, we can see the output power on high is also 5 watts. Moving on to the external programming options now, well you have a couple. First, you can use the Retivis mobile application. And at the time of making this video, the HA2 was available as a device in the Android version of this app with iOS support coming towards the end of January 2026. Now, the mobile application uses Bluetooth. And of course, you need to make sure Bluetooth is turned on on the radio before attempting to connect. But once connected, you can read the HA2's data back to the device and, well, start editing it. There are some strange quirks with the app, which of course could change as time goes on. Like when it comes to editing a channel memory, you're only presented with the channel number, which could be an issue if you want to edit a specific channel, which is amongst hundreds of others. In fact, when you go into the zone settings and select the memories within that zone, the channel name does appear, which I think should be the same when actually editing the channels. 
Now, all in all, it's not a bad application, and most of us do have mobile phones in our back pockets these days. So programming on the go is super convenient with this Retivis app. Of course, the other external way in which to program the radio is with the Windows application. And this time you need to use a programming cable, which essentially provides a COM port. It would have been nice though for the computer programming support to be provided with a direct USB-C connection. This would not only save time and money on purchasing a separate programming cable, but reading and writing speeds would also not be limited. We've seen other radios in the past which support USB-C programming directly on the radio and reading and writing was lightning quick. So I have no idea why that is not included on all modern day radios now. However, the Windows application does appear to work okay without any crashing, well, at least for me. I even used ChatGPT to create an import channel file in a CSV format, and well, that even worked as well. Now, one of the settings you can only change on the software is the APRS Smart Type options. Here you can configure each type with a low speed, a slow rate, turn angle, etc., etc. So if you're going to use the Smart feature on the APRS beacon in, then it's well worth using the Windows software to configure this first. Now, talking of APRS, you can configure the HA2 to display and log any received APRS beacons, which will also show a heading and distance from your location or the location of the handheld, as long as you have a GPS or GNSS lock. Now, one of the last tests that we like to perform on radios like this is the spurious emissions test. And with the radio set to high power, with a 60 dB attenuator in line between the radio and my testing device, we can see the spurious emissions on the VHF band at 145 MHz. Well, they're super clean. So it appears that the HA2 filter system, for VHF at least, has been designed correctly. On the UHF band at 435 MHz, also on high power, we see a similar result. No harmonics above that near minus 80 dB noise floor of the tiny SA Ultra. So the HA2 is a win for Retivis, making a clean radio and legal to use on air. Now there are a couple of things that I do not like about this radio, and let me just tell you what they are. The first thing is the buttons. I think the buttons are quite stiff. However, some people might actually like that because I guess you've got less chance of accidentally pressing a button. Another thing I think is a little bit strange is that if you quickly turn the rotary encoder to change frequency or memory, then it will kind of lag behind. You can spin that rotary encoder really fast and then just sit and watch the screen update. I think that needs to be improved in future versions of firmware. Anyway, guys, that's the Retivis HA2 radio. Another dual band radio that's come to the market this year of 2025. Again, why do we need so many new radios? I think the fact is here is that there's so many companies that are making radios like this at the moment that they'll release another product, a new product, which improves on the previous model. Now, if they're all doing that every couple of months, then that's why we see such an influx of new radios come to the market. And then, of course, you've got new models that companies come up with. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.